Hey, this week let's take a deep dive into my development board. So jumping right into my development board, uh, I hope everything's in focus and you can see the components. I'll definitely flip this over later in the video to show you what it looks like underneath. It's definitely a little bit of a rat's nest, but the board works and that's the main thing. So first off, I just wanna explain a little bit why I built this board. Um, I think I came, kind of came to the dilemma that probably a lot of do-it-yourselfers come to at some point that you have a schematic and you want to uh, quickly hot swap maybe resistor values, capacitor values, and you don't want to go through the messy soldering, desoldering process to do that. Um, that's what led me to get these uh, breadboards here. And, you know, after having these breadboards sitting around for a while, um, I came to the conclusion that the breadboards alone weren't enough to really get me quickly uh, changing component values. So I decided to expand it and make a full-scale development board with inputs and outputs to my guitar, um, the power, etc. So I don't have to, uh, you know, build something else to go along with these breadboards. Now a little bit about the frame quickly before I get into the layout. Um, this is just a simple body or a simple frame that I built out of uh, two by one pine. It's essentially just a pine stake that I've created a little box out of. And then I have a masonite top, which is essentially just pressed cardboard. It works well, it's pretty durable. I've had this board now for uh, probably a year or two. And uh, you know, it's, it's held up well. I, I probably wouldn't pour water on it or anything for reasons other than you know I'm gonna be plugging power into it. I just don't think this would hold up well if it got wet. So as you can see, the board is really split into two sides. That's because when I ordered these breadboards, I had the idea of, you know, how many pedals am I going to be building at a time? How much uh, real estate am I going to need for my components? Um, when I decided to go ahead with a development board, I thought, you know, great, I'll make two. So if I'm ever doing two effects pedals, I'll have two separate spots to make them. Uh, I landed on this layout just for uh, the reason that it allowed a little bit more versatility and I only had one thing sitting around the shop. Uh, the versatility that I'm talking about is maybe indicative of how you see this currently wired. So um, actually, let me plug in the board quickly. So the way this is wired, um, I only have this little breadboard and this little breadboard wired into these foot stomp switches. So if I turn this guy on, the uh, underneath connections are only going to be connected to this guy. Likewise, if I turn this side on, these underneath connections are only going to be connected to these guys. What that allows me to do is use this breadboard here as a jump off point, And it allows these two breadboards to be, um, I'll say, liquid in that they could uh, apply to either side of the effect. So... I could essentially just um, you know, connect something from the lower side up here if I wanted to expand, you know, and then something from this guy here to this guy here. If I wanted to use all three of these boards for my right side of my pedal. Likewise, I could do the same thing using these three boards together and just using this one uh, alone or two and two. Now, before I talk about the wiring that I have set up here, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about what these breadboards or how these breadboards work. If you already know that, feel free to skip ahead in the video. So to describe the breadboards, I'm just gonna use uh, this bottom right-hand breadboard to explain it. Um, the breadboards are really split up into uh, four sections. We have a rail section at the top, a uh, connection section I'll call it in the middle we have two of them and then a rail section on the bottom so rails are connected horizontally so this is actually numbered uh, a pin 30 back to pin 1 here are all connected and there's a red line to indicate that underneath it you also have a second rail which is connected here and that is also numbered from 1 to 30 
and they are connected horizontally as well. The blue rail is not connected to the red rail. In the connection section, as I called it, we are connected vertically, and uh, these are also numbered from one to 30, and we have vertical connections in the columns from A to E. So that means everything here is connected, and everything here is connected from F to J, but the F to J section is not connected to the A to E section. So if I wanted to connect something that was maybe sitting here in A to something that was sitting in J, I would actually have to use a jumper, say between E and F like that. And we do have 30 of those vertical connections. And then on the bottom, we have similar rails to the top. So in short, uh, horizontal connections on the top, two sets of vertical connections through the middle, so a set here and a set here, and then another set of horizontal connections in the bottom. The only difference between the small boards and the big boards is the horizontal sections are also split so the rails are also split here at the 30th pin. If I wanted to run something from the upper right hand corner to the upper left hand corner, I would have to run a jumper somewhere between those two sets uh, divided at the 30th pin. Now you'll see I have red, white, yellow, and black wires protruding from underneath the board on both sides. They are my supply voltage, my input signal, my 2B output signal, and my ground. And that should be pretty common uh, coloring scheme for those wires. Again, these are both controlled by foot switches. Um, you know, all the powering and current limiting resistors are on the bottom, which we'll take a look at in a second. So the last thing I want to talk about is this toggle switch here. Uh, this board is set up so the right side is always running into the left side or the left side is always running into the right side and you can control that order with this toggle switch. So if I have a fuzz pedal here and a delay pedal here and I want to see what delay into fuzz looks like, I would have the toggle switch here. If I want to see what fuzz into delay sounds like, I would have the toggle switch there. And this is a three pole double throw switch, toggle switch, it's two positions, and I'll actually put the wiring for that uh, on the screen now. I think this is something good to know if you're building a development board. Uh, makes it really easy when you're thinking of a multi-effects thing and you want to know if you should maybe add something like this or if you just want to come up with a preferred order of those effects. So quickly just looking at the top of the board, you can see I have input and output jacks for my guitar and also my nine volt uh, adapter. So looking underneath the board, you can see it's a little bit of a rat's nest and, and possibly some poor decisions with color coding my wiring. I think this was basically just because I ran out of the other colors and was stuck with red, and I really wanted to get this built before my order of new wire had come in. So we have our wiring to our output and input sides, and we have the double wiring or the uh, the wiring for the voltage going to both sides of the effect. Um, as you can see, I'm using these breakout boards by RuliWow to connect to my foot stomp switches. This just avoids the need for me to do the small soldering of wire between the specific legs. They also have the spot for the current limiting resistors on both sides, which I have 2K2 resistors here, and also the uh, place to solder in the leads for your LED. So it's a nice compact thing. I use them on pretty much all my pedals as well. Uh, definitely recommend checking these out if you haven't, and I'll put a link in the description below. So lastly, just touching on the LEDs, uh, as you probably saw when I had the board flipped over there, three mil green LEDs, and we have our rat's nest around our three pole double throw switched used to reverse the order. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a breakout board for this guy, so I had to do all that wiring myself. Uh, definitely makes me uh, miss having these breakout boards and you know, a breakout board for this might be something I look into uh, 
uh, later on down the road. So I hope you guys like that review of my development board. Uh, a few things I didn't get to in the video. One uh, was these uh, top breadboards here. I placed these on here after the fact for essentially potentiometers. I didn't want to waste room down here on the main breadboards with potentiometers. So these are all five pin uh, boards that will accept a common micro or uh, alpha potentiometer. They're running uh, horizontally, so I have to kind of point them this way. Really wish I would have turned them the other way in hindsight. Uh, they're connected to the board just by drilling a couple holes and then they're pressure seated in there. Um, the other thing I didn't talk about were how these were connected to the board. Um, all of these breadboards that I purchased, luckily enough, had adhesive backs. I think they were 3M adhesives. So just uh, put them on, found the right spot, pressed them down, and they've been pretty sturdy on there ever since. Um, other than that, I guess just a quick overview of the board. You can kind of see the size, I guess, if I hold it as well. You know, you can see the, the pine stake that I cut up, and then I've got the them screwed on each corner, uh, or at least four of the corners there. So yeah, I hope you guys like this. Uh, definitely hit me up with any questions you have in the, uh, in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys.